Hi, this is Andy Herringshaw with Tractor Innovations. Today we're going to be installing one of the remote hydraulic kits on this Mahindra 3016. Now these kits are the most affordable and easiest way to get remote hydraulics on your tractor, whether it's Mahindra, Kubota, John Deere. I build all these kits in my shop and I can fit them to just about any tractor out there. You just need to give me a call. This kit comes fully assembled with the valve, brackets for the rear, quick couplers already installed for really fast installation. We've got a hardware kit and zip ties and full color instructions to match your model of tractor. I've got the tools I need, a drill and a few wrenches here to the side and uh, we're going to get started. Installation can often be done in as uh, little as 15 to 30 minutes uh, depending on the model. Uh, for this tractor, we're going to be mounting the valve right here to this metal firewall and it's got the quick connect plugs right here behind the loader arm for a really fast installation. We call that the plug and play kit. So to get started, I'm going to set the valve in place and cut these zip ties out of the way so that these long hoses can drape out of the way. going to sit right in here next to the loader connections and out of the way of the hood but mounted to the firewall right there. Before I mount the valve I'm going to go ahead and test fit the hoses just in case um, I need to tweak around where this valve would sit to uh, sit well with the hoses. It's your choice whether you want the kit installed on the lift function or the dump curl function. If you install it on the lift function, what you'll do is pull the valve and now your flow is diverted from the lift function, forward and back, to whatever you've got hooked on the remote. What I like about the lift function is you can shove it forward into that float position, the detent, and that allows your rear attachment, whether that's a top link or whatever you've got, it allows that cylinder to float, to move. It does not provide flow. I get that question quite a bit. Can I run a log splitter or something off the bat? Yes, you can, but you just have to bungee cord the position of the loader valve. You, it, that, that float position does not provide flow. Okay, so lots of people do it on the lift function. The curl function can certainly work as well. People running uh, mower conditioners on the back and other implements that move right and left, it can be really intuitive to move those right and left. Whatever function you're selecting away from, so when you pull that valve, you're selecting away from the loader, that cylinder up there just stays locked in place. If you've got it on the lift function, you'll just set that up a little bit out of the way, pull the valve, and your loader will stay right where it's at while you run your remotes. Okay, so he has chosen to put that, uh, the valve kit on his lift function. So I'm going to trace these hoses and just make sure I know exactly what colors I need to connect those to. Looking at the quick connectors for the loader, I've traced these front two hoses all the way to the loader cylinders. So our colors are blue and green for the loader circuit. If you wanted to hook it to the dump and curl function, that's uh, yellow and red. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and disconnect one of these. Disconnected the blue one. And now I'm going to come in and look at my loader, my switching valve. I'm gonna hook up the front hose and the front input hose to that circuit. We're gonna do these one at a time so we don't get anything crossed. We just pull up on that collar and slide it on. Now that I got the supply hose connected to the tractor, I take the output hose from the switching valve and connect it back to the loader. We'll zip tie that out of the way um, at a later step. Okay, now I'm ready for the other hose. The green hose I'm going to disconnect.
it gets connected to the switching valve output. And the input gets connected to the track in that same spot. Do those one at a time and you cannot get them backwards. All right, we've connected the loader circuit to the switching valve. Now we're gonna put the valve right here in place, make sure there's nothing interfering with it, and then drill the holes to mount it. Get those hoses situated in there, and we're gonna put zip ties on those later to keep them from rubbing on anything. But as long as they're just kind of down in place, we can see where the loader, excuse me, where the switching valve is going to mount and we can mark those mounting holes. All right, now be very careful. We're gonna pop the hood and look behind this before we do any drilling. And it uh, could even be smart, put a little piece of metal. There is a gas tank back here. You do not wanna shove into the gas tank. So just be very careful with any drilling. There is a protection plate here, so it would really be actually kind of hard to hit the gas tank, but I'm gonna, I've got my holes marked here and I'm gonna drill them with a 5 16th drill bit. All right, with the holes drilled, I can easily reach behind here to get the nuts on the back of those uh, bolts. So I'm really happy with that mounting location. Now it's time to mount the valve. All right, I've got out my hardware kit. I've got my knob, my mail tips. Those I'll put on the back on whatever implement I'm connecting. And you've got all your connection hardware for mounting the valve. So pull out those two long bolts, lock washers, and nuts. I've got the holes drilled, so the bolts are gonna go in, and this is actually one of the tougher parts if you're mounting to a firewall, is getting the washer and nut on there. But with a little patience, it's not too bad. All right, we've got the loader valve in place, holes drilled, the bolts placed through there, and the nuts and lock washers on the back. Getting those nuts and lock washers is one of the toughest parts of the install. We ended up using needle nose pliers holding the, the nuts while we twisted the bolts here. We also ended up loosening this plastic panel by the dash so we can reach in behind there really easily from both sides. I've got my half inch wrenches, so I'm gonna hold the nut on the back side of the bolt and tighten it up. Okay, the valve is on tight, mounted to the firewall. We're gonna get this plastic put back out of the way, and then we'll put the knob on. The knob comes in the hardware kit and has a lock washer on it. Spin that into the valve. To get that knob nice and tight, I'm gonna pinch on the very outside of this piston with vice grips and tighten that knob. Do not grab with vice grips on the inside of that piston. You will mar it up and have trouble sliding it or have leaks in the future. So I'm pinching on the outside of that circlip. Give that knob another quarter turn. That's tight, good to go. Now's a great time to test that knob going in and out. It's not hitting anything, not obstructed. I'm really happy with that mount. We can drop the hood and get ready to run the lines to the rear. With the valve secured, we're now ready to take the remote hoses to the back of the tractor. So we're just gonna look for a smooth path where they'll be up out of harm's way 
and we'll come back later with zip ties to really get things secure. But for right now, I'm gonna see them going up over these hoses and then up over the rear axle so everything's up out of the way. Remote, remote hoses routed up above the axle. We're ready to start to find a place to mount the mounting bracket. This mounting bracket comes in its own bag and we're gonna assemble it over to the side and then bring it over and clamp these together. So open up that bag. Nuts in there, and we're going to first assemble these W clamps together just with the outside bolts. We're going to put those in loosely so that we can slip them over those remotes. So use the smallest bolts, smallest lock washers, and smallest nuts, just barely get them started. And then we'll put the inside bolts on once it's mounted to the tractor. Okay, I've got those W's just barely started. I'm going to take both of these remote connects, slide them into the W brackets. And this is really important. You want this spacing to be right with about a quarter inch of the outer sleeve of that hydraulic coupler sticking out each side of the bracket. If we don't, if you clamp them clear on the outside like this, it's not going to work right. You're not going to have the right action to make it slide. So once you've got them centered in there, just by hand, tighten those nuts just so they don't come apart. We'll tighten them down with wrenches when it's all said and done. Yeah, those look good. Okay, the next step is to find a place for the whole bracket to mount. We're gonna mount the single whole side to the tractor. The double whole side is gonna match up to those W brackets there. He's got an existing hole right up here that's gonna work well. We won't even have to drill a hole. I'm going to take the rest of the hardware kit. Got a one inch bolt, washer, and lock washer. I'm going to put the washer above, slide that through. Go on with the lock washer and nut below. All right, we initially had the, the hoses coming up from below. But as we tried to connect it onto this bracket, the hoses were hitting right there. And uh, so depending on the model of your tractor, I may put uh, right angles on there so it can sit down below. On this tractor, it was super easy just to bring the hoses up and over this piece of the roll bar here. And with these nuts loosened, we should be able to get it onto this bracket. Just like that. Once those holes line up, we use the rest of the bolts from the hardware kit. Lock washers on below and nuts. Nuts. Next step is just to finish tightening all the nuts of this W, w bracket assembly so that these can slide through easily. Half inch nuts on the inside, and seven sixteenths on the outside. The last thing to do before we leave the back of the tractor is to test these quick couplers to make sure a, the, a hose tip can enter and exit them easily. These are the double breakaway tight clips, quick connects. So that means a tip is just pushed to, to slide in. And say you forget to disconnect it from the implement and it pulls, it connects. So let's do that to both of them to make sure the tips enter and exit easily. We're good to go. 
There you have it, the simplest and most affordable way to add remote hydraulics to your tractor. With a pull of a finger, we, you switch from loader functions to rear remote. You can't mess up this installation, and I can do it for just about any tractor. Give me a call. My number and contact information is right below. To show you how the Tractor Innovations remote hydraulic kit works, I've got one installed on this New Holland tractor. With the plunger in, I run the loader as normal. Push the plunger, the loader is locked right where it is, and any motion here controls the rear remote. I still have control of the dump circuit. It's just the lift circuit that now controls the remote. Depending on your tractor, if you want to run it off the dump circuit instead of the lift circuit, you can certainly do that. Let me fire up the tractor and show you those two modes as well. With the plunger for the loader, I have complete control of the loader just like normal. Even with a loaded bucket, this valve moves just with a push of your finger, and now forward and back controls my top link or controls any other cylinder you attach to the back, and you've still got the dump function. This is the easiest and quickest way to install remote hydraulics on any tractor. Any brand you've got, let me know. I can build a remote hydraulic kit for it. Thanks for watching.